What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing yet again another overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about two trades that I made today on the 3rd of April in 2019. And since I've been getting a ton of questions about Lyft stock, we're going to be doing a brief analysis of the stock and whether I personally think it's a good time to buy what am i personally thinking about lyft we're going to be talking about that in this video as well so before we do get into this guys all i ask if you enjoy these videos if you enjoy the technical analysis the market updates the trading updates all these different videos here on youtube all i ask is Go down below and hit that like button, guys. That's the way that you can repay me. It really does support me and supports the channel in general. And I really do appreciate you guys for doing that and watching these videos. And if you guys are new to the community here, I have two links down below in the description box for you, one of them being the Discord group chat and the other one being the Facebook group, both of those being 100% free of charge. So if you guys want to be further connected with me and our entire community, get in there. You'll find value, I guarantee you, with that. So let's just start off this video again talking about the overall markets. So here, the S&P 500 was kind Kind of on a roller coaster ride today. We saw it was up about 20 points. We actually dipped into the red a little bit towards the end of the market here today. And then we ended up popping back up green, up $6.16 at the close, up 0.21%. So that's what the SP is looking like as of right now. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 39 points at the close, up about 0.15%. And if we hop over here to the one day, one minute, it was a roller coaster ride as well, just like the S&P 500, right? We popped up, sold off, and then popped up again towards the end of the market. And the NASDAQ composite here, guys, Ended up closing the day up around 61 points. Pretty solid day. Actually, let's see exactly where it ended up closing because this is the future. We can see roughly about 8 points below from where we are right now is where we closed. So roughly about 0.7% up for the day. Up about $50 to $52 at the close. Pretty strong green day for the NASDAQ, but for the S&P and the Dow, it was still a green day, but... More of a, you know, I would say consolidation day, um, you know, for those two other indexes. So let's hop over here to the S&P very quickly to do a technical breakdown. I do this in every single video so we get a better understanding of where the markets are pushing, what the technicals on the markets are looking like, so we can better have, you know, again, understand where we're pushing and what trades we're looking to make based on the market, right? Right. So we talked about yesterday and this morning in the morning video how the S&P broke above the 2860 resistance. We held it as a new support and pretty much we consolidated there for I believe it was two days in a row, Monday and Tuesday. And today we actually had that gap up day. We were up 17 points pre-market hours when I did film my morning video. We ran up all the way to 28.85. We pushed for another higher high in the SPX. And then we saw that pullback here, like I said, very big pullback of about 20, 21 points. And pretty much we retested that same general area of support right around 28.60. 60 to 2865, where we consolidated for the two previous days of trading on Monday and Tuesday this week. So this guy's the fact that we pulled back here and we bounced on this level of support again, and now we're pushing up green towards the close of the market. This is a good sign that the S&P 500 does want to continue this push heading into tomorrow, but it doesn't mean 100% that we're going to push tomorrow. All I'm saying here is that the technicals towards the close of the market are showing us that we could potentially push there tomorrow. So just keep an eye you know, on the futures tomorrow morning, the large caps. That's going to tell a big story of where we're going to be pushing you know, towards the last latter half of this trading week. So in general, guys, for the S&P, very basic. All I'm watching is 
A? Are we going to continue that push? Are we going to consolidate here for maybe a day or two, maybe for the rest of this week? Or are we going to pull back and potentially test and break below the 2860 level of support? Which, and in, in my honest opinion, based off the technicals here now, you know, we might not be doing that due to the little push we had towards the end of the market. But again, just keep an eye on the futures, the large caps tomorrow morning for the SPX. And guys, every single day here that we're having green days after green days after green days, you all know we're getting closer and closer to all-time highs. So in, a, in every video now, I'm going to be doing this where we see how far we are from all-time highs because we're getting so close. As of right now, we're at about 1.96% roughly off from all-time highs. Last time I did this, about a video or two ago, we were around 2.5% off from all-time highs. So we are getting there, guys. It's looking like the S&P, the markets in general, they do want to crack those all-time highs. So let me know what you guys think about that, right? Do you think we're going to crack all-time highs? Do you think we're going to break the all-time highs and then have a big correction later on this year? I personally think, honestly, that's what's going to happen, right? I think, you know... We're going to break all-time highs here. We're going to run up a little bit more. But then the euphoria state of the market, this, this unsustainable run that we're seeing, it's going to come to a halt here in the next couple of months, in my personal opinion. We're going to see a 5% correction, maybe even a 10% correction here, because again, we're up almost 20% this year. These gains are not sustainable, guys. If we were to continue to push at this rate, the S&P, like I mentioned a couple of videos ago, would be at about an, an 100% gain in, uh, not really 100%, maybe like 60-70% gain by the end of this year, which again, it's, it's just not attainable, right? So what do you guys think about that? Let me know down below in the comment section. I would love to know. So the Dow Jones today actually is still struggling to get out of that resistance that we were talking about in yesterday's video at about $26,200. Take a look at this, guys. I don't want to spend too much time on this because the Dow really didn't make any, any huge moves that we need to talk about. But just to recap, and for all the new viewers out there, the Dow Jones really got rejected by this $26,200 level of support, or, or rather, it's getting rejected. It's, it's having trouble getting above that level from back in in the beginning of uh, November in 2018. This was a level of support you know, back towards the end of February. And now we're seeing over the past couple of days, if we just hop in here on the five day, five minute, very strong level of resistance here. We gapped up on, I think this might've been Friday. We gapped up pretty heavily, right? To 26,000. And we've tested that level. Then we gapped down on Monday. We hovered there a little bit. We tried to push above it. We briefly broke above it there, but then today we dumped again, right? And now with that little push up towards the end of the market, it, we're still trading below that level of resistance. So tomorrow, just keep an eye on these levels, guys. You know, are we going to break out of this level, slowly test the next level of resistance, which is at about $26,400, about 200 points higher from where we are right now. That is what I'm going to be looking for, right? Or are we going to end up getting rejected here, maybe see a bit of a pullback and a retest at about 26000 which is the next support level that I'm looking at right now. These are things that could potentially happen and again drop a comment let me know what you guys think i would love to know what you think about that so the nasdaq composite here finally broke out of this resistance here at about $7,500. And this one, guys, it's looking like it broke that resistance. It actually retested it as a new support on that big pullback that we did see, right? From 76.16, we pushed out of the resistance, right? We retested it again on this pullback and towards the end of the market and the futures are showing this here. You know, we're pushing back up. We're bouncing on that support level and it's looking like we want to continue this uptrend push in the NASDAQ. So tomorrow, guys, very simple. Are we going to maintain this level? Are we going to continue to push up? This is what I'm going to be looking for. And in terms of the NASDAQ, how far are we from all-time highs, guys? We're about 1.9% off, and I forgot to do it on the Dow. Might as well just go back and do it right now. So let's see for the Dow Jones. 
We're about 2.7% off from all-time highs right now. So out of the three index indexes, guys, the Dow is the furthest from all-time highs. The NASDAQ, I believe, is the closest, and the SPX is in second place. So that's what I'm looking at, guys. Nothing too crazy. Tech stocks actually did pretty well today. I think Apple was up to 197 at one point. Facebook was up to 177. Pretty strong run there in terms of Facebook. It looks like we did get rejected close to the resistance here on Facebook from a couple of months ago. We obviously got rejected there back in August of 2018, trended down really heavily. We all know about that in terms of Facebook stock. And now it's looking like we're testing that level again. So if we were to break 178, 180 in Facebook, that could be a runner back up to, let's say, maybe 183, which is a resistance, you know, 185. So keep an eye on those levels for Facebook. But, you know, the gist of it is, guys, you know, NASDAQ is a tech-heavy um, index. Tech stocks did pretty well today, which is why, you know, the NASDAQ followed and did pretty well, you know, better than the S&P and the Dow Jones today in the market. So that's what I'm looking at, guys, in terms of the overall markets. Again, drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this. So what did I end up trading today? You know, I actually didn't take any day trades today, but I took a nice profit on NVIDIA stock. So for those of you guys that didn't watch the chip companies today, they did very well because AMD. I think uh, I think it was an analyst or something upgraded AMD to a buy. AMD stock went up 12% at its highest, right? And typically, you know, especially with the chip, the chip company, something that I've noticed is, you know, when one does very well, typically all of them do well. And this is something that you notice across the stock market in many different sectors and industries. It doesn't always happen, but sometimes, you know, when one of the companies does very well, when a company upgrades or an, or an analyst rather upgrade, upgrades a company to a buy, you know, a lot of the other companies in that same industry sector do very well as well, right? And we saw that today with NVIDIA, Micron, and here with AMD, guys. Take a look at this huge move in AMD. This just goes to show how, you know, what can happen in, in one day. And we can see here, AMD stock surges after instant instant net i can't even pronounce that calls it a buy so this is what really triggered it this was the catalyst in my in uh you know my opinion a lot of people out there think that as well and really that led to nvidia which is, is a stock that i was in to go absolutely crazy today all the way up to 190 dollars or something like that in the morning and the fact that we surged up four percent really early you know i or you know, it wasn't four percent actually no it was four percent from the close of yesterday we opened up you know up four percent you know pretty much at this point this is where i ended up taking my profits on nvidia it was a nice fat juicy profit i you know i really just couldn't resist from taking it because I've been in NVIDIA, like I mentioned this morning, since about 176. I got in a little bit more with a little bit more money at about 180. And the fact that we popped up to 191, guys, you know, I couldn't resist but take the profits there. And now I'm just waiting for a re entry that since we did end up popping above this resistance at about 185. And let me just add this very quickly, right? My initial plan was to sell NVIDIA at about 185 And for those of you guys that watched this morning's video, I think I actually mentioned it and I said that I was going to sell NVIDIA today. And the fact that it ran up so quickly, you know, we broke that, that level of resistance, right? You know, I could tell pre-market hours we were doing very well. Then we popped up heavily. You know, again, I just couldn't resist but taking the profit, especially since we were over my target sell price. So NVIDIA, Video, very, very big move there. Let me just see how much uh, percentage I did end up making on NVIDIA. I don't really remember to be completely honest with you guys. So let's say my average cost was at about 178 roughly up from where I sold. Yeah, that sounds about right. About 5-6% on a couple day swing trade there. I'll take that any day of the week, guys. That's what I ended up doing in terms of NVIDIA. And that is honestly... 
uh, the only profit that I ended up taking today. And I actually took a swing trade or just a little position here in NEO stock. I bought about 110 shares a couple of hours ago at about $5.38 in NEO stock. And this is one that I actually talked about in my video yesterday. So for those of you guys that want to, uh, you know, see a little bit more in depth about NEO, why the stock fell, what I see in NEO stock, go to yesterday's video, fast forward to about 15, 16 minutes in or something like that. And that is where I start talking about NEO stock. So we saw Really, the gist of it, guys, was we pulled back this morning from 557 down to about 530. And at the moment, or rather, the time that I got in was at this point right here where it seems like we were uh, holding a support level at about 538 to 540. I got in there with 110 shares. We ended up dumping a bit down to about 524, which doesn't really scare me, guys, because like I mentioned in yesterday's video, this is a super speculative company super speculative swing trade that I'm putting money in this with, you know, the, uh, what's it called with the mindset of potentially losing all of it, right? Strictly a $500 swing trade. I'm willing to lose $500 guys, to be completely honest with you. If this goes bankrupt, I'm willing to lose the money due to the high risk, uh, not really high risk, the high reward, and obviously the high risk that's involved with it, right? So I mentioned that this is typically not, you know, what I, uh, you know, trade in the stock market, but you know, why not guys? Sometimes you do got to take or have to take some risky positions, right? This is one that I'm personally uh, trading. And again, don't just base your decisions off my personal decisions. Do your own research, understand what you're trading, and don't risk more than you're willing to lose, especially guys on um, speculative plays like this. Again, I'm willing to lose that $500 if it went to zero. I wouldn't be mad because I'm willing to lose it, right? So in NEO stock, that is what I'm doing. And let's say we do end up popping above this resistance at $6. I might add some more to my position, right? Maybe another $500. I might buy another 100 shares at that point. But until then, guys, I'm just going to be patiently holding NEO stock for the next couple of weeks and just see what happens from there, guys. So that is what I did today in terms of trading. And let's just talk about Lyft stock very quickly. Like you saw in the title, like I mentioned earlier in this video, I've been getting a ton, a ton of questions on Lyft stock. So let's just hop over here. And for those of you guys that don't know, maybe you're out of the loop, Lyft stock is a stock that just IPO'd. This is a company that does you know, it's just, it's like Uber, right? You you have an app, right? You request a driver, uh, you know, and you put a destination in your phone and pretty much that driver comes to you. He picks you up, she picks you up and she takes you to the destination, right? That's simply the business model of Lyft in a nutshell. You get picked up, you get dropped off. That's it, right? That That's it, right? And typically when companies IPO, they have an initial public offering. A lot of the times, I would say 90 to 100% of the times, again, I'm not an IPO expert, but from what I've learned over the years here from my research, you know, a ton of IPOs are overvalued. They're extremely, extremely overvalued. And it's rare that you hop in when a stock IPOs and you make a crap ton of money you know, maybe you can in the short term, but over the long term, let's say a year or two, you know, typically not always guys, you know, the stock itself goes down in price. Sure. You know, there's a lot of hype involved in IPOs sometimes. And again, like I said, they can run a crap ton in that day or that week where sure you can make a lot of money, but on the flip side, a lot of them you see this chart here, a lot of them end up like this, right? They, they open up the IPO at a certain price and they end up tanking like crazy. And what is that telling me, especially here in Lyft stock? That's telling me that the company itself, the stock price is extremely overvalued, guys. People aren't finding value in the stock's price up here 
So it's pushing the stock's price down, right, from $88. I believe it opened at $88 per share. Let's hop out here a little bit. We can see it. Yeah, roughly about $88 per share and went down to 65 which is about a 20 to 25% drop. And typically, guys... I don't invest in IPOs. I don't trade IPOs. I just simply like to watch them. So should you buy Lyft stock? You know, if you want to buy Lyft stock, if you believe in the company long term, go right ahead. I'm not going to be that guy that's on the on YouTube telling you to not buy a stock. Don't do this. Don't do that. You have to make your own decisions for yourself. You have to understand what you're trading, what you're investing in. But am I buying Lyft stock? Absolutely not, guys, because again, companies that IPO, a lot of them are overvalued. A lot of them are speculative. They're not profitable. They're losing money year after year. You know, we're seeing that again, they're not profitable. And that's just something that is super risky in my eyes. And typically when a stock IPOs, you know, we'll wait a couple of weeks, a couple of months to see how far the stock price goes down. And typically let's say the market values a stock or rather, let's say the stock continues to drop down. That's typically what the market believes the value of that stock is, especially for an IPO. So the gist of it, guys, is, you know, we saw a little bit of reversal here, which is why a lot of people started, uh, you know, messaging me. But the gist of it is it's a very speculative play here, right? Just like NEO, not much, um, you know, you know, the bottom line, the profits, you know, they're just not existing, right? This is something that super speculative. You got to do your own research and who knows guys, this is going to go down to $30, $20 a share. You know, I was reading a book yesterday. I believe it was in the intelligent investor or something like that, where there was an example that a stock literally opened up at IPO at $30. And a year later, it was literally a penny stock of about five, 10 cents, right? These are things that are real life. They can happen. And the last thing I honestly want to happen to you is you put your money in the lift and then you lose 80% of your money, right? That's something that I don't want to happen. So am I buying lift? Nope. I'm on the sidelines. I'm just, uh, you know, simply spe uh, uh, what's it called? Speculating here. I'm watching, right? I'm just watching lift, see what it does. And if you want to buy it again, do your own research, but I'd be super, super cautious. So let's talk about some other stocks and ETFs here that I'm personally watching very quickly before we do end off this video. So Tesla today, guys, oh my goodness, Tesla had a $10 pop here. I was about to say 10%, a $10 pop from 286 up to 296. And it's finally looking like we're breaking out of that channel here. We're breaking out of that 180 SMA of resistance. And this could be the sign that we need to see on a technical, uh, technically speaking, to get us back to $300 per share. So now let's say tomorrow, you know, we end up successfully holding this level of support here, a previous resistance at 290. Let's say we do that and tomorrow we slowly start to pop up. I'm going to be waiting to see. Are we going to slowly start to creep up to today's highs, which are 296, and slowly get to the next resistance, which is at $300 per share? This is something that I'm watching. If we get to 300, I think Tesla is going to potentially start running back up to 310, 315. Again, technically speaking, here. But again, you know, we could potentially pull back if, you know, we do get rejected here, which is why, or rather we do end up breaking the support tomorrow, which is why we have to just play it by ear here and see what's going on pre-market hours. But Tesla, guys, just like every single day, is one that I'm watching super closely. So we, we talked about Facebook a bit earlier. Facebook's actually one that's super interesting right now. It's looking like it broke the 170 resistance here, and now it wants to trade, or rather it's looking like it wants to trade in between the 170 and the 179, 180 channel here. So the fact that we pulled back Heading, heading into the uh, market close today, we pulled back to 173 and we saw a high at about 177. That opened up a nice fat margin of profit heading into tomorrow. So, you know, the gist of this, guys, I want to see 
are we going to maintain, you know, 171, 172 as a support here, 173, and then slowly start to pop back up? And if we do, I think this could be a nice swing trade back up to 180, 179, 178-ish, maybe 180. It offers a little bit of margin there. I'm definitely, definitely watching this one. So one that actually one of the Discord members called out to me and I told him I would talk about it in this video is ticker symbol B E Bloom Energy Corporation. And this is one that I don't know too much about in terms of fundamentals, but I'll do a technical breakdown here based off of what I'm seeing. So overall, you know, this is a this is, seems like a bearish pattern in my eyes, right? Although we did break out of the 180 SMA resistance, the 50 SMA resistance, which at this point in time, you could have argued that that's a bullish move. We're recovering to the upside. But the thing that I'm not liking here, guys, is that we really sold off and we've been slowly starting to make lower highs from this peak here. And the fact that we're about to see, maybe if we sell off tomorrow, a bearish cross of the 50 crossing below the 180 SMA. We see a strong red candlestick forming here towards the end of the market. This seems a bit bearish to me. And let me just slowly draw a, uh, a trend line right here so we can get a better understanding of what I'm talking about, right? So take a look at that, right? This could potentially be a lower high from the previous, which again is a bearish pattern. So I'd keep an eye, honestly, tomorrow. Tomorrow, are we going to end up breaking out of this channel or resistance right here, this little channel that we're trading in? Are we going to test maybe $15? If we do break this level, I think there is a chance we can get to $15. But first, I want to see, are we going to break again this lower high downwards channel? That's something I'm watching closely on BE. So another one I want to talk about in this video is at V guys ticker symbol A T V I and at V right now I just need a further confirmation of the break above $48 for us to potentially hit the next resistance at about 5130 which really I think is possible if we do end up breaking out of this level tomorrow maintaining it as a new support and then popping back up so at V, very, very uh, brief analysis here. Not too uh, hard to explain, but at V is very similar to NVIDIA where we broke, or rather not similar to NVIDIA because NVIDIA already broke the resistance. But if at V breaks the resistance, it'll be very similar to NVIDIA. So that's pretty much it, guys. You know, I'm watching uh, NVIDIA tomorrow. I'm watching at V. I'm, of course, watching, like always, you know, crude oil, UWT, you know, these two have been on an absolute roll recently. It seems like we're consolidating a bit. Maybe we pull back a bit tomorrow to get a better entry on UWT or crude oil. I'm watching Facebook, Apple, a bunch of these tech stocks. You know, AT&T has their ex-dividend date here in a couple of days. You know, this could potentially be a trade if you want to grab their dividend. I think it's about like 7%, 6-7% right now. And of course, it's divided by 4. So if you divide that by 4, you can get 1.5% if you simply own the stock through the X dividend date. You know, these are a couple that I'm watching and obviously Tesla, you know, maybe if the markets sell off, TVIX, these are just a couple that I'm watching, right? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about the video, any stocks you're trading, what are your picks, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit that notification bell if you want to be notified every time that I do make a video. I appreciate all you guys watching. It means a lot to me. Have a great one. Good luck tomorrow. Peace out.